bright duty every student matters hello guys welcome back to our lesson so today we have chapter 9 and the title for this chapter is called transportation and communication now this is the ninth chapter in the last two chapters previous chapters which was 8th and 7th we looked at agriculture and we and after that we looked at manufacturing sector or industries now this chapter is all about transportation and communication if you rewind if you think about the beginning of this section of your book we started learning about economy we started learning about the geographical features indian uh, different features physical and also economic activities and there we kept on um, learning or we kept on coming across the words which were the terms which were primary sector secondary sector tertiary sector now agriculture we know belongs to the primary sector manufacturing industries belongs to the secondary sector now transport and communication this belongs to the tertiary sector all right so as we go through these chapters we have to remember these as well how it connects to the previous chapters that's why i keep reminding you as to how we should remember some of the things that we have learned in our previous classes so the first topic that we are going to begin this chapter is transport now transport we all know right we see buses we see cars vehicles bicycles these are all modes of transport and what those modes does or do they help us move from one place to another not only people but they also carry goods they also carry other materials okay so in the truck you put loads of sacks of potatoes and you transport from one village to the town to the cities etc so that is how transportation works that is transporting the particular uh, goods okay and in the similar manner the buses they transport human beings people get transported from one place to the other within the city within the village between cities between towns or between states okay now this is how transportation or this is how means of transport works today right if we have to go to the market we take the bus or we take the train metro we take the car but earlier in the beginning of the time this was not how it is today okay the transport system was not efficient the transport system was not modern and during that time people did not or could not move from one place to the other with ease and with so much a convenience they had inconvenience they had difficulty so they could not move to wider area or they could not move from one corner of the country to the other corner so their movement was restricted within the boundary of the area that they lived within the country that they belonged to okay in the similar manner trade also because trade also occurs or trade happens with the help of transportation system okay if there are no transport services then the trade does not happen because for trade to happen things have to also move around things have to be taken from the fields where they are produced to the markets where people can purchase if there are no cars for the raw materials for the goods which are produced in the agricultural sector to take to transport it to the market from where the human beings can buy then the uh, trading or the commerce does not take place so that is why transport is important component of the trade and commerce as well but earlier if the transportation or the modes of transports were not advanced they were if they were not as how it is today then trade also did not take place as widely as it takes place today okay because the movements of goods and the people were restricted within the area that people lived within the area that goods and services were produced okay but in the period uh, in due course of time as the time went on with the development of technology modern technology advanced technology this changed right now uh, today if you look at it the networks of transportation the networks of trade 
where trade takes place the area that these uh, transportation covers from uh, one place to another you can travel from one country in the globe to the other side of the globe right it's because of the development of technology is uh, because of the development of science so as a result of that today the transportation network is spread all over the world you can easily uh, travel or move from one place to the other with ease okay there are various modes of transport waterways you can travel by air you can take a plane or you can take a ship you can take a car bus train etc so the distances which earlier seemed very far okay people because there were no proper mode of transport they could not move properly but today the modes of transports are advanced modern easily available so the distance which earlier seemed very far now it has shrunk now the distance seem very um, short okay people can reach uh, from one place to the other within minutes within hours within a um, couple of hours if earlier uh, that particular distance to cover that distance uh, the time that people took to travel would be one uh, uh, one week or one month etc okay so so this has made possible by the development of a very fast efficient transport and communication system people moving from one place to another people realizing that the distance is not much as if the distance has reduced over time okay with the availability of various modes of transport so that has happened because of the development of transportation and development of communication as well now if you look at our country india today india is very well linked to the rest of the globe so it has relations or it is well connected with the other countries foreign countries all across the world okay and in this link in this connection in this exchange that india has with the other countries transportation and communication system has helped or encouraged and supported it okay and transportation and communication what it has done is it has made the lives of people much 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 easier now people can travel with ease during a very short uh, for a very short short period of time now if they need amenities if they need anything which is not available in the area that they live but is available in some other countries but still they can get those services they can get those goods because they can be transported very easily okay and they can be made readily available to the people so people's life have become easier much more convenient okay now the means of transport and communication they are the lifelines of our country of our nation and our economy we know that with transportation and communication and its development what has happened all the countries our country is linked and connected very well connected with the other countries in the world now that connection is transport and that connection is also trade it's related to trade as well the con our country can trade with easily with the use of transportation or with the use of transport system with the other countries which are far away from our uh, from our country so that way what has happened there is a link of economy and that link and connectedness or or how the connection is maintained between our country and other countries that helps in the growth and development of the economy of our country okay that is why transportation and communication are called the lifelines of our uh, nation as well as the economy now trade uh, both national local and as well as as well as global or international it depends largely on the efficient and dense network of transport and communication we already meant, uh, we already learned about this that for trade to 
take place between one country to another country or between one village to another village or one town to another city between one state to another state within the country the network of transportation has to be efficient the communication system has to be dense okay without that it cannot happen so because of the efficient network of transportation and communication that we have today we can have successful trade and commerce okay at a local level village level town level at national level okay between nations or within the states of the nation and glow at a global level or international level okay outside with the foreign countries now there are three main modes of transport one is air the second is water and third is land so these are three mediums of transport okay in the uh, next or in the following sections, we'll look at these modes of transportation in, in more detail. Now, these uh, modes of transport, what do they do? They make or they help the movement of goods and services. They help move people from one place to another. They help uh, move uh, goods that are produced by industries or goods that uh, or agricultural products produced by farmers from one place to another. Okay, so until now we learned about what transportation is or communication system is and how it is also the lifeline of a nation and its economy. So when we think about transport, so how do we define transport? Okay, now if we have to define transport, then we can say that transport is a system in which passengers or people, people and goods are carried from one place to another. So movement of goods and uh, people through a system or network is called transport. Okay. Now, since the beginning of the civilization of human beings, uh, people have been moving from one place to another in search of food in, and for trade and also for living. They have kept on moving on. Okay, although there were no means to make that movement easier, they would walk, they would carry their load, but they would keep moving. Okay, people have been moving since the very beginning. Now, in this movement, earlier the movement was restricted, like we already discussed, without the uh, modern transportation uh, or modern uh, without the advanced technologies the transport the transport system or the communication system that we have today that it is much more faster it is much more easier okay but earlier it was not like this the movement was restricted but people moved on people moved from one place to another people traded took their goods from one place to another to sell to sell them to buy other goods from other people okay but in course of time with the time uh, in course of time with the development of science technology and advancement of technology and development of it the transport system became easier faster and much more comfortable to the people all right and here we look at roadways. So roadways are one of the modes of transport. Modes of transport or medium of transport. Okay. So in India, the roadways uh, are one of the largest road net. Uh, India has one of the largest road networks in the world. The roadways that we have in India is one of the largest in the world. Okay. And the importance of the roadways or the roads, it has been recognized since ancient times. So the roads have not become important only today, but it has always been important. Rulers like Ashoka, Chandragupta, they built roads for easy transportation of goods and people. They knew how roads could make transportation of people and goods easier. Okay, so they built roads for that. And when the Mughals came after these rulers, they continued this uh, method. They continued this practice, practice of building roads for easy uh, communication or transportation of goods and people. 
uh, Grand Trunk Road. It's one of the important road or it was also one of the important road, uh, road during the ancient period. Now, this was built by a ruler whose name was Sher Shah Suri and it was built it was built across the Indo-Gangetic plain in the northern part of India. So this road, it connected Chittagong in Bangladesh to Pakistan, Peshawar in Pakistan. It was that long and it went through all the different cities and towns that lied or that was located along the northern part of the country. Now this road, it passed through Howrah, Delhi, Amritsar and it terminates or it terminated in Kabul, Afghanistan. So this road is still, it, it still exists in our country, okay. The road network that we have in India is about 2.3 million kilometer. That's the distance of the roads, okay. That's, you can imagine that the distance or the length of the roads and the network of roads that we have in our country. Now, the roads that we have that can be divided into six main types according to their importance. How important these roads are according to it, we can different, uh, we can categorize them into six types. Now, let's look at them. The first one is called Golden Quadrilateral Super Highways. What are these kind of roads? These are roads developed by the government of India. Okay, they are projects which are introduced, initiated by the government of our country and they are developed. Those roads are called Golden Quadrilateral Super Highways. Now, these roads are built to link major metropolitan cities or the big cities in our country, which are Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Mumbai. Okay, and the roads, the width or the size of the road is super big. Okay, it's very wide and these are six lane super highway. So the lanes on which the vehicles can move, they are six lanes. Okay, on six different lanes, the vehicle can move. So you can imagine how wide the roads are. If you go outside your house or the roads that you have around your locality, those are just one lane roads. Okay, if there are big cars, then other vehicles have to stop or give way to that big car to pass. But these roads are six lane, which means six uh, vehicles which are uh, which are moving adjacent to each other. They can move simultaneously. That uh, shows or that indicates the wide or the width of the how wide or how uh, large the width of the roads are the total length of the road this uh, quadrilateral highway is 5846 kilometer now this highway is managed by the national highway authority of india okay it's one of the bodies of the government whose main um, role is to manage the quadrilateral highway. This connects major cities like Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Mumbai and also ports, okay, the sea ports and it helps in industrial growth in all small towns because these highways, we already said they connect major cities and ports but as they connect, they also go through other smaller towns so as it goes through bigger cities and smaller towns what it what these roads are doing they're connecting both the major towns and the smaller towns so the goods and services which are transported through these roads they go through smaller towns and the ma uh, the major towns the biggest the bigger towns okay so that way it also helps in the growth of economy because goods are circulated transported and that way the trade is also taking place people can buy easily people can move easily so that contributes to the growth of the economy and growth of the industrial sector as well and let's see how it further helps so these highways what it does is it brings or it transports agricultural produce 
from the smaller towns or the villages to the major cities and ports for exports. So we already said this roads go from smaller towns or through smaller towns and bigger towns and as well as seaports, right? So as these roads go through all these various ports and cities and towns, they also transport agriculture products and goods produced by smaller towns as well as bigger towns and takes them to ports, various ports from where the goods are then sent uh, to be sold in the markets abroad, okay, in the foreign countries. So you see that way there is a growth of industry, there is also growth of economy of the country. Now this road apart from uh, contributing to the economic growth of the country, it also helps in the creation of job opportunities. It provides job opportunities because these roads need construction, these roads need management, okay, and for that they need workers, they need people to work. So, so the people come and work uh, at the construction of these highways and they also uh, they also it helps those job opportunities help them to get incomes and also better their living standard now as these construction works take place in these uh, highways that construction work creates demand for materials such as cement steel and other construction materials so that way what it's doing it's also supporting the industrial sector Okay, because the industrial sector is the sector from where the steel, the cement are being obtained or procured. Now, the quadrilateral highway, it runs from north-south, okay, linking Srinagar, which is in Jammu and Kashmir, to Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu. So, it goes from north to the south of our country. Okay, and it also goes from the east-west direction linking Silchar in Assam and Porbandar in Gujarat in West. So you see there are two corridors which goes from north and south and the other one going from east to west. So these are two main corridors which are quadrilateral highways that cut through the uh, nation. All right. The second kind of road that we are going to see is national highways. Now, these highways are roads which connect one state with another. So, within our country, we have various states, right? So, these national highways are built for connecting one state with another. Now, the national highways constitute 2% of the total road networks. So, if we look at all the road networks of our country, the national highway constitutes only 2% of that network, okay? But it carries 40% of the total road traffic. So, this means that although the national, uh, the Although the national highways, they are not many, but the traffic, the, uh, the use of this road for transportation of goods and services and people, that use is uh, much more uh, than, uh, than the number of the roads. Okay, So that is why we say that 40% of the total road traffic is maintained or carried by this national highway. Now, national highways connect long distances and even pass through uh, congested cities. So, these national highways, they run for long, uh, for long distances, covering long distances, connecting one uh, state uh, with another one. As it connects one state with another, it goes through many cities and most of the cities are congested. Most of the cities are big, bustling and hence they are congested. Okay, uh, because of how uh, this, these national highways are used and the load of traffic uh, found on these uh, national highways, these highways are also called primary road systems. Okay, now who, uh, who makes, who builds these roads and who maintains the national highways? It is the Central Public Works Department or CPWD in short, they are responsible for laying 
out the road as well as for its maintenance. It runs in the north, south and east, west direction just like the quadrilateral highways. Okay. So some of the national highways. Um, no. So national highway number one which we have in our country still to Till today, that highway was actually built by Sher Shah Suri. Okay, and this highway connects Delhi with Amritsar. Okay, so this highway still exists and it is called the National Highway Number One. The next roadways that we are going to look at is called State Highways. Now, by the name itself, we understand. These are roadways which connect or join state capitals with towns and the district headquarters. So these roads run within the state connecting its capital, towns, major towns, big towns and its district headquarters. Okay, This state highways, they play an important role in linking with linking the states with the national highways. We know that national highways run across the nation. Now, the state highways, they play an important role uh, to link the state with the nation. Okay. And these state highways are constructed and maintained by the State Public Works Department or in short, PWD. Okay. The next road is called District Road. Now, District Road connects the district headquarters of the state with other places of the district. So, each state in our country has many districts and the district roads built in one particular district connects the district headquarters with other places within that district. Okay. So, it links, uh, it acts as a link between the district road and the state road. Similar to how the state highways connect the state with the national, uh, national highway. In the similar manner, the uh, district road acts as a link to connect the district roads with the state road. Now, the district roads are maintained by Zilla Parishads. Okay. The next kind of roads that we are going to look at is called other roads. Now other roads are basically village or rural roads, roads which are built or found in the villages or in the countryside. These roads they connect rural areas and villages with the town. So these roads main role is to connect the villages with the towns and the cities. Under the Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sadak Yojana which is initiative of the government, government initiative, it has made sure that every village in the country should be linked to a major town by a motorable road which can be used in all seasons. So this scheme of the government ensures that the villages are connected to the towns by the road, by motorable road, not just any road. Okay, the cars, the vehicles should be able to run through those roads and not only on particular seasons but throughout the year. Okay. The next roadways that we are going to look at is called border roadways. Okay. Now, these kind of roads are found along the border areas of our country. We know the border area, right? The bordering or the boundary of the country is called border area. So, in those areas, there are roads built. So, those roads are called border roads. These roads are constructed and maintained by this organization called Border Roads Organization. So, if you notice, all the roads that we have in our country, those are maintained by specific organizations or bodies. Okay, they are responsible for the construction as well as the maintenance. There is not just one body which overlooks all kinds of or all types of roads. Every organization at every level, they are responsible for its maintenance as well as for its construction. Okay. The border roads organization, it functions directly under the central government. So the central government overlooks uh, how the border road organization functions or how the roads are maintained. Okay, the BRO or the Border Roads Organization was established in the year 1960 and its main 
uh, aim for its establishment was for the development of the roads in the northern and northeastern border areas of our country. Okay. The border roads are very important because it's of great strategic importance to our country. Because these roads are right on the border, the area where uh, the neighboring countries lie. Okay. The border roads uh, connect, help the border areas connect to the national highways. So the border roads act as a link between the national highways and the border areas. It provides, the border roads provide accessibility in difficult terrain. If the physical landscape, if the, if the landscape is very difficult, hilly, rocky, and it becomes quite difficult for making sure that the transportation and communica communication system uh, is established there or it has well connected network of transport then the border roads are built in those areas and the roads provide accessibility okay so these were various types of roads now we'll look at importance of the road transport we learned how the road transportation are right how there are different kinds of roads but now we'll look at why is it important why are roads important there are many reasons first it provides a link connection between railway stations air and sea ports and it is also used as feeders to other modes of transportation so the roadways provide connection or link to the other modes of transport which are railways sea transport and uh, airways okay and it also acts as feeders okay it feeds goods and services to the other modes of transportation from the road it goes to the seaport it goes to the uh, airway airways it's taken to the railway station or to the airports sector okay so it's feeding it's feeding to the other modes of transport that's why it's called feeders now roads connect mountains and desert with other parts of the country roads can be built anywhere okay so that is why it connects mountains deserts plains all uh, kinds of region okay they are connected by road and roads are cheap and easy both in construction as well as maintenance they are not so expensive like the other modes of transportation it connects markets factories with farms so roads help in connecting the markets help connecting the farm of uh, agricultural sectors the farming areas the factories as well as the urban areas or uh, areas cities or towns where people live and where people uh, trade or sell their goods transportation offers best uh, transportation service okay for passengers for people and also for goods for over short distances if you want to travel a short distance then the roadways provide the best service it's best to use the roadways okay roadways as the means of or mode of transportation if you have goods which need to be transported for a short distance then the uh, roadways provide the best transportation system and if the goods are perishable okay if the goods cannot be kept for a longer time or if the goods are very fragile or fragile nature it can be broken easily so that means it cannot be uh, it cannot be kept in a vehicle or in a uh, it cannot be taken on a means of transport which will take a long time to reach the destination okay so in such cases the road transportation acts uh, as a very important mode of transportation for transporting perishable goods over a short or medium distances okay not for long distances but for short and medium distances transportation of perishable good goods are good uh, perishable goods can be done through the road transport so these were the reasons why the road transportation is very important but the road transportation also has problems it has challenges let's look at them the road networks are inadequate although we read that the road networks are vast there are so many roads built connecting different towns 
ports, cities, villages in our country. But still, the road networks are inadequate and it does not meet the needs of the people. People still have difficulty in communicating. People still have difficulty in moving from one place to another. The national highways which are built in our country, they were built long time ago and hence they are not as wide as it should be. Okay. And most of the old bridges or culverts that are in between the roads, okay, they are also very low and they are old. That acts as a um, hurdle in the smooth movement of people and goods, okay. Almost half of the roads are unmetalled and hence their usage during the monsoon is limited. The roads are built in such a way that during monsoon it's washed away it gets washed away had the roads been metalled if the metals were used for the construction or during the construction of the roads then during monsoon with heavy rainfall it will not get washed away but because the roads are unmetalled during heavy downpour of rain they are often washed away okay and many of the roads pass through congested cities towns and this also creates problem this does not allow smooth transport of people and goods and there are lack of there, there is lack of roadside amenities facilities along the road okay which make the road travel uh, convenient easy okay better if you travel long distance and if there were proper amenities on the road available like first aid if you fall sick or if you have an accident, then you need health uh, care services, right? Emergency health care services. If they are not there, then you have problem if in case you face any medical emergency. If you travel for a long distance and you need food and if you have not carried food and there are no restaurants, there are no food stalls along the road, then you have difficulty. So these amenities are also not available on the road because of which traveling becomes difficult and uneasy. So here in this map, you can see the different roads that connect different cities or goes through the length and breadth of the country. So you see these roads connect the country from east to west, north to south, as well as other major cities and towns of, of our country. So with that, we move on to the next topic. And this topic is called railways, another means of transport. Okay, The railways that we have in India is the largest public sector undertaking in the country. Railways is the public sector undertaking. It means that it is controlled and owned by the government. Okay. Railways provide the main artery of inland transportation in India. So the transportation within the country that in that transportation or in that process of transportation railways play a major role it's a very important component of the inland transportation of india inland transportation meaning within india the transportation within india okay railways provide principal mode of transport for freight and passengers in india so it is a very important mode of transportation both for goods and people okay it helps in the movement of large scale and long distance goods and people railways are best for long distance travel, for long distance transportation of passengers or people and also goods. Okay, Railways was first introduced in India in the year 1853 and the first railway line ran from Mumbai to Thane and it covered a distance of only 34 kilometers. By the time India got independence, the railway lines had grown to 42 rail system. Okay, there were 42 rail system and in 1951, the railways was nationalized as one unit. It came within the government, okay, as one unit. It railways comprised of one unit. Today, railways have been divided into 17 zones. So, railway network is very vast and very intricate, 
okay it goes to uh, all parts of the country it goes to all regions of our nation so it is very difficult for management of each and every railway track or railway line that's why it has been divided into various zones so that people or officials or the government is uh, government of that particular zone is responsible for the maintenance and for also the monitoring of that particular railway lines in that zone okay so for the easy a uh, way for for making monitoring of railways for making management of railways easier the government has divided it into 17 zones railways have acted as a as one of the best integrating factor of our country for the past 150 years so in the past since the past years okay since past 50 years railways have acted or played a major role in integrating the people integrating different parts of our country it has brought together the people living in different parts of the country people can easily move from one place to another goods can easily be transported from one place to another because the railway network is so vast and it it goes through all states all villages and all towns in our country it connects far flung places uh, places the uh, the places which are far away from the cities they are all connected and it has brought people closer to each other because the connectivity is now much more better with the establishment of railways people feel more connected because they can easily move from one place to another because the mode of uh, transport is railways okay now indian railways have three different gauges what is a gauge gauge is the distance between two metal rails on which the wheels of the locomotive or the rail roll or run so this is the railway track right this is how the railway track looks now this is called the gauge this here which i'm shading this is called the gauge okay the distance between the two metal rails on which the wheels of the locomotive here the wheels of the locomotive run right so the distance between these two uh, metal rails are called gauge now indian in indian railway system the indian railways the rails or, or the trains they have three different gauges they are called broad gauge meter gauge narrow gauge okay so the broad gauge they run the longest the meter gauge lesser than the broad gauge the narrow gauge lesser than the meter gauge okay now the distribution of the railway network it depends on many factors you cannot build railways just like that okay it depends its build uh, its construction or its laying down build, uh, is dependent upon various factors factors like physiography the physical feature of the landscape the economy okay how the economy of that area is whether there are uh, agriculture sectors where farmers produce agriculture products whether the areas have industrial uh, large industries which produce industrial materials whether the area has big cities uh, or urban centers so all that factors which are physiographic economy and administrative factors these uh, are dependent or these matter these influence the distribution or construction of railways now wide when there are wide rivers they cannot be crossed without bridges right if there is wide and deep river then a bridge has to be built in order for the railway line to be connected from one side of the bridge uh, from one side of the river to the other side okay so in laying down or or in building the railways if one has to if the government has to build also bridges okay uh, along with the railway lines then that adds to the cost which is already so much for the construction of the railways okay uh some regions like himalayan region which is a mountainous terrain right the physical feature of the himalayan region is mountainous there such terrain uh, acts unfavorable such terrains are not good for the 
laying of the railway lines. It's quite tricky, it's difficult. If the areas are plain and not so hilly, then the railway lines can easily be laid down. But if the regions are mountainous, then it becomes difficult. Similarly, the hilly terrain of the peninsular regions, we know the peninsular regions also have hilly terrains, the western ghat, the eastern ghat, the plateaus in the Deccan uh, region, these also uh, act, uh, these also prove difficult for the laying down of the railway tracks. Now, the flood plains of Assam, Bihar, they also create difficulty, okay, because here flood is very common. Okay, so the railway tracks can be easily washed or damaged because of the flood. So here also the difficulty of maintaining or constructing the railway becomes uh, difficult. The sandy plains of western Rajasthan, forest areas of Madhya Pradesh, Ch Chhattisgarh, Orissa and Jharkhand and the swamps of Gujarat also make it difficult for the laying of the railway tracks because of the physical features of those uh, regions. Okay. The deserts of Rajasthan and the hilly tracks of Sayayadris also act unfavorable or prove unfavorable for the development of the railways because the um, terrain does not suit the construction of the railways. So, there are some problems even with the railways okay and let's see what are these problems the first one is ticketless travelers in the railways there are many people who travel or try to travel without any ticket so when we travel or board the train or try to send goods through the railways without paying for the ticket then that leads to loss of revenue loss of revenue okay second is thefts and damages people sometimes try to steal uh, some of the things which are which are present in the railways or the trains okay so those thefts and some people also try to damage the property of the railways that also causes problems okay and third is chain pulling so every chain has a chain to pull this is this is uh, this is made in such a manner that in case of emergency in case of emergency people can use this chain to pull so that the chain can come to a stop okay but instead of using it only in the cases of emergency people keep pulling the chain without any situations of emergency arising so that leads to carelessness that also leads to damage of the railways so these are some of the problems faced by the railways